In the development of the Internet, tonight we are fortunate to have amongst our speakers a member of the ICANN Board of Directors and member of the Ethnic Board of Directors to understand how OP3FT is positioned amongst the bodies taking part in developing the Internet. Who better? Then I can the organization in charge of regulating domain names for the internet to explain to us the what currently exists and the internet ecosystem as it exists today. Sebastian Bachelet will be joining me here on stage. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for having accepted to take part in this first Frogans Technology Conference to shed some light on your vision at ICANN. I will now give you the floor. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me tonight. It's true that I have the light in my eyes so I can see you, but I know that people in this room know much more than I do about ICANN and the environment, but I will try nevertheless. Uh, slides, please. I will try to give you some information. The basic question is this. Where do we stand? I don't know in which order my slides are, but clearly there's a problem. Oh, it's better to start at the beginning. I'll try to speak about Internet governance. I believe that regardless of the layer you're dealing with or the system, there's a time when governance issues must be raised. The debate organized some weeks ago in Sao Paulo at the Net Mundial meeting organized by the government of Brazil with several other uh, stakeholders led to a debate as to what was the use of having a multi-stakeholder system. Multi-stakeholder being you, me, people outside of this room, each representing one aspect of the various type of persons or organizations involved in how the Internet operates in general. Once again, when I speak about this, it is not specifically about the part linked to ICANN, which I'll be speaking about in greater detail later on. Next slide. The question is, multi-stakeholder, is this an experience, an experiment, or a model? In some organizations, they use these different terms. I believe that it's an experience every day. We have experiences every day, like in techniques to try to innovate. And in that respect, Net Mundial was a real innovation with fundamental changes as to how a meeting may be held and how you can have remote participation and how we can manage to organize a meeting in six months' time with 800 participants and after two days, we are three quarters of the first day was used up by speeches by government representatives. And how can we ultimately manage to have a document that is accepted, that is a consensus for the vast majority of participants, apart from a few irreducible, not people of Gaul, but governments, be they from Russia, China, or Cuba. But all the others reach an agreement. The other important point when we speak about governance and the Internet is that everyone can be in the room. It's important when you think that there are some intergovernmental summit meetings that left outside the civil society, very often ending up with uh, full-fledged battles with some people dead. I prefer people in the room with discussions. That may be tough, real discussions, but everyone there in the room, no need to have the police outside or the like. So, this is also an important aspect of what I consider and why I think it is important for all players to participate. When you speak about governance and the Internet, everyone has a, a, a viewpoint. These are different models 
the Ipper Foundation here, the Diplo Foundation, which dates back some years ago, it's a museum, but it's still been constructed, even though one floor has been built since. What's more mathematical, let's say, by our friends from the Internet Society Monde, showing paths depending on your definition of policies, coordination, the data path or the money path, four different paths. And I can't help showing you the one that I invented some years ago and it's sought to deal with all organizations which in the country, France, were in charge of the internet governance, trying to put them in the various categories, Europe and the rest of the world. The idea being if I could remove one country and put another one, remove a continent and replace it with another, and that way I would have something interactive. But as you can see, these are different visions of the Internet government. So sometimes it's interesting to speak about where we plan to go and how. Because if we don't start from the same point and we do not have the same objective, it's more complicated. But this is one interesting point. In a way, everything presented to you tonight Somehow, OP3, FTs, all of this in one go. Very complicated in, when it comes to domain names with respect to what you are proposing. I must admit that one thing that we consider important in the world of the internet and domain names is the fact that you have many players and they're all interdependent and together we can make things evolve. I'll go quickly here because you already heard about ITF, ICANN, the Internet Society, the governments, the forum on internet governance, and you heard about those managing registries, those selling registries. We already spoke about all these people. All of this is an ecosystem that is up and running, with some things going well, others not as well. From time to time, to take one example, you take a small thing, and you say, because of all of this, it doesn't work. You have historical examples, uh, points XX that took 10 years to come out, point Y and point V, one topic which will uh, cause war around the world because the Americans are against geographic names, who as the wine dealers in the older nations absolutely want to keep those names. All of this falls in the backs of ICANN, and yet ICANN is only there to implement extensions, to dot something. So we'll also need to regulate content and how things are organized, whereas these are issues that were well, the World Trade Organization has not been able to reach an agreement for many years. I could take other examples. Dot Africa is an interesting example as well. But these are just small examples. When you have 1930 applications, if you have two, three, four, let's say ten extraordinary things, I think that is not something that should call into question the overall model or system. Um, this is what ICANN does, more specifically. It's in English and also in French on the next slide. I won't spend time on this, but this way you'll have it. Everyone can play a role. It's really open to everyone. Because it takes some time to understand, but I believe that what we had tonight also requires some time to understand. But it's exciting. So that's the part in French. And I think I finished my presentation. I would just like to round up by pointing out that tomorrow you'll be speaking about uh, Frogans, 
I don't have any shares in, in anything, but when we voted, we said we needed innovation, things that were different, new. It may raise questions. You may wonder why you have 120 million domain names in .com. Why bother about the rest? Maybe the things presented here are the innovations of tomorrow. And if that's how things work, all the better. And I hope that you'll be a part of all that. Thank you. A question to Sebastian later on, if you wish. And now, OP3FT, thank you, Sebastian, for mentioning that the fact of using dot programs amongst the tens of hundreds of new GTLDs is eloquent, just like the tens of hundreds of new GTLDs is eloquent because the Internet was created precisely so as to bring innovation freely. But you always need to offer something new to Internet users who are always more numerous. OP3FT is a newcomer amongst the organizations taking part in the development of Forgans technology and development of the Internet, I'm sorry. It is focused on the Forgans project that needs to view in all aspects, standardization, implementation, developing software, the legal environment, promotion, and I'm forgetting others, I'm sure, but maybe not. So that is why on this global Internet that Sebastian just spoke about, showing different visions, it is fully part and part and will uh, abide by all the decisions taken in, by ICANN in terms of domain names because it's focused on technology, technologies based on DNS. So it's a great pleasure and OP3FT is delighted to have good contacts with ICANN. But a global internet also means an internet that is worldwide, international. OP3FT, to accomplish its mission for the public, must create links amongst the various communities. One, amongst many other examples, is the recent shift of OP3, the move from OP3FT to China to meet Chinese end users and to continue to develop Forgan's technology to make it really international, taking into account local specificities. To speak about it, I would like to bring up on stage Jérôme Delacroix, who was the man behind the OP3FT mission in China. More broadly, is in charge of international cooperation for OP3FT. Jérôme, thank you for speaking tonight as a part of the first Frogans Technology Conference. Could you begin by introducing yourself and your role at OP3FT? Hello, Jean-Manuel. Hello, everyone. I, I'm at OP3 FT and I've been there for some years now. I think I started in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. I've stepped in for the various missions in general in connection with promoting Forgan's technology, be it in drawing up websites, different types of documentation or presentations. More recently, I was put in charge of a team called the team in charge of making sure that everything that OP3FT does is compliant with the principles and values in the bylaws. We spoke about openness, neutrality. Everything done by OP3FT must comply with that, and that's what the values compliance team oversees. More recently, I was fortunate and had the great pleasure of going to China, as Jean-Emmanuel just said, for an, exp an exploratory assignment. The first thing I should explain is why such an exploratory assignment. On screen, you have some figures helping you to understand why it is important to take into account Chinese internet for the Frogans project. You have a curve showing the progression of the population of end users for the internet in China. It goes quickly like everything else in China. Today we have over 600 million 
internet users in China, meaning 22% of internet users around the world. More than one out of five internet users. This is a huge figure, but also the growth of this figure is also very rapid. So that's the first point. We cannot overlook such a significant portion of the global internet users. The second point, and this is my second slide, relates to the proportion of Chinese internet users using mobile phones. The growth is very rapid once again, exceeding in a way what may be happening in the Western world, because 8 to 1 percent of Chinese internet users use the mobile phone to connect to the internet. To such an extent that the mobile phone is the main terminal for internet access in China. Why am I saying this? It's not just an anecdote. It's because of Organ's technology is very well suited to consulting content on mobile internet. Oh, yes, so you mean to say that the Chinese internet is specific in that it doesn't work the same way as the internet that we know of in France and Europe? What about in terms of governance? We often hear about uh, internet users' regulation. Can you tell us more about that? During this assignment, indeed, I met several standardization and regulation bodies in China. As Mr. Bachelet said earlier, I realized that these bodies have a strong determination to take part today in internet governance. More specific specifically, I could mention some bodies. For example, I think we have a slide to illustrate this, known after that, again. We have three important bodies we can mention. The first is the CNIC, the resource center uh, managing the Internet in China. It dates back to 1997. It is in charge of various extensions, local Chinese extensions, the .cn and .tongo, which means China in China. Chinese and extension in international characters. The CNIC is also in charge of two extensions, .gon-e, meaning company, and .wangwo, I'm sorry for my approximative pronunciation, which means .network. The second body, CONAC, which was founded in 2008. It is a governmental body, or more specifically, it reports to the Communist Party, because things are very much entangled in China. And they, too, are in charge of two extensions. Recently, introduced an extension for governmental affairs and another extension for the public interest. Don't hold it against me if I do not pronounce the names. I'm afraid of misspelling the names for a friend. Yeah. The third body that I met with is the Internet Society of China, not to be confused with the Inter Internet Society, uh, which has nothing to do. <coughs> it's a purely Chinese organization in charge of uh, publicizing the use of the Internet uh, in China, education. In fact, the internet is uh, booming, but it's still uh, very little use in certain rural uh, areas. So there's a kind of digital uh, disconnect or divide in China so that needs to be addressed. And in terms also is of its assignments, there's the uh, regulation of the uh, internet with the notion of self-regulation, if you will. Uh, which is a nice word to to speak about uh, uh, censorship or the control over contents in China, which is exercised upstream by the publishers and uh, uh, content uh, designers in China. So I met with all these people who were very uh, interested in the fact that uh, OP3FT should uh, go all the way 
we there and try and understand the specificities of uh, the internet in China without any uh, biased uh, approach and uh, just willing uh, to discover. So you said that most of the internet users in China are um, essentially using um, mobile devices. Uh, the fact that you browse on uh, mobile device and write in Chinese language uh, have its specific uh, issues on t technical problems. Did you note anything uh, while in China? Well, that's what I said uh, earlier. The progress technology has certainly some benefits to um, to show in this area. This is a screen uh, snapshot. The, the advantage of Frogan's site is that they are very light, lightweight. Uh, they need very little uh, disk space. Therefore, they don't need a big um, um, bandwidth to be accessed, and which is a big advantage in rural areas where the broadband, the bandwidth could still be quite um, low. So, frozen site can be accessible uh, across the whole Chinese territory without any difficulty. The other advantage is that frozen site will be available based on identifiers, which are uh, frozen addresses that are international identifiers. That is, you can use Chinese characters to uh, key in the uh, frozen addresses. These are real international identifiers because the, fro the frozen addresses in Chinese characters will not be translated in the background into ASCII characters, Frogan's player will be able to interpret these uh, Chinese characters to uh, re resolve the um, Frogan's addresses, uh, to provide the resolution of these Frogan's uh, addresses, because of typing in addresses in Chinese on the web and tomorrow maybe on Frogan's player is something that is not quite easy. Just by way of example, uh, for your knowledge, uh, it must be known that in Chinese there are different ways to uh, key in addresses uh, on a phone, for instance. The first way is pinyin. Pinyin, in fact, you use the Latin characters reproducing the sound of a Chinese character to enter a given word. This is the first mode. For instance, the first character, wo, I, uh, in Chinese, uh, you type W O for the word war. The, the second way to enter a character is uh, to use the basic strokes when you um, write a uh, pictogram. Chinese characters use a number of strokes, which I don't know by heart, but for instance, you have a horizontal stroke, a vertical stroke, a little cross. Um, you have a, a stroke towards, towards the right, you have little dots of the sand, the end before the uh, water, for instance. So you have different root characters that build up a, a, a character. And the third mode is uh, directly plotting a character on with your finger on the screen, which in the, this last... Um, uh, would, uh, mode would require a, tact, a touch screen uh, with a uh, big enough a screen so that you can uh, plot these characters on screen. So this is uh, yet another advantage of the Frogan's uh, technology because the Frogan's addresses can be short. Uh, therefore, uh, there are some limits, size that I haven't got in mind in terms of number of characters. Therefore, the Frogan's uh, addresses being short, it will make uh, the, the life of Internet users much uh, easier uh, when using a mobile uh, device. So, um, uh, short addresses, low bandwidth, or um, uh, uh, therefore we see a great future for program technology in China. Thank you, Zhou Hong. Uh, earlier, you spoke about these um, Chinese organization governing uh, the use of the internet. Uh, but you also uh, met with international organizations. Could you tell us about them? Yes. Um, I met, for instance, the person in charge of the engagement center of ICANN in Beijing, and this is something quite new over there because it was decided only during the ICANN 46 Congress that took place in Beijing recently, and this engagement center was opened only recently in October 2013 with three major aims. First, to facilitate the communication of ICANN 
vis-à-vis -vis the Chinese communities, um, improving the relationship of ICANN with the registra registries uh, and the re Chinese registrars, and more generally to uh, engage in cooperation actions with the Chinese community or communities. So you see, ICANN has been present in China since 2013, which means that Western countries are only uh, quite belatedly arriving in this country. Uh, the other organization that I met with is W3C, which uh, tried to um, go to China back in 2000 for the first attempt. The first attempt uh, to set up a, an agency in Taiwan uh, initially it lasted a few years, but it was not quite satisfactory. And then um, they started from scratch in 2008. You may remember that there was um, something like the Olympics and also a Congress of W3 in China, and uh, they work uh, with uh, the Peihong University uh, on this event, and the event went so well that the W3C decided to enter into a partnership with this university, Chinese university, and since uh, 2012, China uh, is one of the international hosts of W3C. Uh, as a reminder, W3C is a totally informal structure without any legal uh, entity which is present in the United States, in Japan, in Europe, and since 2012 in China. So again, you see that uh, the hi history is uh, gathering momentum. Thank you. So, uh, to conclude, you could say that OP3F3 should draw the lessons of uh, its uh, good relationships with uh, uh, organizations in the field of uh, the internet in China, but also international organizations that uh, have succeeded in uh, setting up the offices in China. Yes, yes, and uh, there is something I'd like to point out, is the importance of uh, being humble, not only being earnest, but being humble. Um, uh, in our approach to China as uh, OP3ST, we, we are very much uh, uh, humble uh, discoverers, not conquerors. And it's uh, very important for Chinese people. The fact that we are a non-profit making organization is yet another advantage. Um, now, we do see a keen interest of all these countries to work with OP3FT to discover the fragrance technology, and therefore there would be uh, some interest uh, in uh, seeing OP3FT represented in China in the short term. So how, uh, um, in what form and shape, we have a few ideas, but uh, it's still open. And uh, anyway, what is visible is important to be present on site, because to be active in China, you need to have Chinese partners. Thank you. Thank you, Jérôme. That was very enlightening. Uh, do you have any questions? Any questions uh, uh, about the internet in China for Jérôme? Uh, I can't see any hands anyway, but so no questions. Uh, so thank you. That was uh, very instructive. Thank you, Jérôme.